Hello, everybody, and welcome to Open Source Summit in North Serenica, Vancouver. And my name is Daniel Rowe, and once again, I'm super happy to be here and even if with the virtual session. And then please welcome to my session. I'm going to really talk about conveyor the platform from Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes. And my name is Daniel O. Oh, I'm working for Red Hat as a developer advocate with a specialized cloud native runtime, for example, Spring Boot, Quarkus, and a bunch of the Java technology like JVC and P. We will spend a lot of time to bring more application into Kubernetes slash uh, cloud providers, such as OpenShift, Red Hat, and then a bunch of the cloud provider like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, etc. So with that, I spend also a lot of time to uh, uh, specific use cases to using applications, serverless, service mesh, and DevOps practices. Because I'm also responsible for CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, ambassador uh, for the uh, past five years. So with that, I got a lot of opportunity to evangelize uh, both developer and uh, IT operation team in terms of the, how to build cloud network architecture across the data center as well as uh, public cloud for hybrid uh, cloud strategies. So here's my contact information. You can follow my Twitter, you can subscribe my YouTube channel, and you can Fork my existing tutorial and then my application from my GitHub poll. So all then you're all 30 and more than happy to uh, listen to your feedback and question with my social. Here's a uh, quick my uh, book here as well. Uh, the practice ansible to and the quarter of a uh, function of the D zone uh, reference part as well. Let's take a one step back, try to understand what we actually go into re-platforming from Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes. So back in 2014, so many enterprise companies tried to adopt a new uh, cloud services, which is a platform as a service, aka as uh, based on container technology at a time. Everybody saying Docker container. Uh, for now, we're gonna have a more OCI standard container format. However, so in that, at a time, a lot of people jump into the uh, past platform services because it uh, gave you and a project company with an efficient infrastructure maintenance as well as more uh, application portability and immutability when you adapt to more scalable high performance infrastructure to run business application. So how to get started your digital transformation and many enterprise company to get started adopting platform as a service at a time. And then you got a multiple choices like a technology and tools and even vendors offering solution. As an example here, a container with Kubernetes uh, was provided a container orchestration with a standard Linux container such as Docker. And you can also have different choices, for example, Docker Swarm, because a lot of developers already got used to using Docker container, using a simple CLI to containerize the application, not only Java, but also Python, Go, .NET, etc. So Docker Swarm, at a time, it allows the developer to pretty much easy to use and simple application deploy your container platform. And now there are also, in the right and bottom side, the Cloud Foundry, which he invented by uh, Pivotal, now is the merge into VMware. But at a time, a lot of developers actually could practice how to build microservices based on 12 factor. And then there are many practices how to build microservices in like Boot and even uh, .NET application. So with that, uh, specifically Java application, how the foundry, it was a fantastic practice for developer how to build containerized application, specifically these microservices with their own technology out of build and the container MG, which is garden and build path. So let's try to deep down the enterprise company who actually made a decision to uh, choose a Cloud Foundry for their digital transformation journey uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the past platform. Like I said, at the very beginning, uh, developer, they, they don't have any steam learning curve to adopt a new container platform to their test environment and production environment, not only developers, but also IT operation team. Because there are already many experience and, and practice uh, which the Cloud Foundry provide, for example, CLI and the WebUI, how to build container image and then deploy it to 
container platform. But things changed then after a few years, and then uh, container platform uh, needed to be uh, take care of the many different uh, capability. For example, high scalability and high performance. And also, uh, the more important thing is you need to flexibly adopt third-party uh, tools or uh, library to maintain your application as well as your infrastructure. For example, monitoring, security, and observation on top of the device. The Cloud Foundry is not easy to adopt their new technology flexibly, dynamically, because they has their own technology garden build pack. It's not easy to adapt to new technology, even if for open source project or even standards of perpetual technology. The big reason why here, because the market already adopted Kubernetes as a standard container orchestration platform. Which means all ecosystem only considerate Kubernetes as the uh, container platform market. So for example, I need to develop or invent a new monitoring or observation tool running on Kubernetes as infrastructure. So previously, the, the vendors, the other party company, a lot of choices to take care of Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, and the Docker Swarm, and even uh, Mesos in Apache Foundation. It is really hard to for us every single vendors to take care of all distribution. Now the standard Kubernetes is the game changer and they only on Kubernetes for echo. So that's why in other side uh, the foundry getting hard to adopt to new technology for not only individual developer for IT operation across the main. So what is the big challenge for cloud foundry adapters? Yes, that is the, uh, they need to, need to be survived to running on a business critical application and then keep running uh, the existing application that was supported by vendors as just open source communities. So to do that, they need to think about, okay, we need to migrate from Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes. So how to do that? And then how much money, effort, and time we need to think about uh, to make that happen. That's the reason why Conveyor was designed and developed to solve this kind of problem. Not only migrate from Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes, it's more like a, uh, some long running uh, path uh, for the migration and modern journey from application portfolio to implementation layer. So let's get into a little bit detail of what Conveyor project looks like or what kind of benefit Turn the adopt to convey your project for your modernization journey. So in order to that, let's try to uh, so go back to and think about digital transformation. So when you uh, in a, like a ten years ago, even so when you get start when you get starting a digital transformation project, you maybe have some question with the uh, existing vendors. So you actually or or you can ask them some I. You can ask them uh, public. You can ask. You can ask uh, public cloud providers or even um, a certain company how we get starting and then what kind of technology we need to think about that for migration or brand. And then they already said, yeah, it's pretty much easy. So you need to do something like a modernize your application, modify your process, also change your culture, to adapt it, then you develop a process and then uh, develop the practice. And then they keep asking there are a bunch of stuff, like when you adopt to DevOps, you to need to think about not only technology, but also process and culture, which he allows to adopt new technologies seamlessly and smoothly, but also when you uh, maintain the technology smoothly, you have to change your process, for example, like agile methodology and practice rather than a big bang style application run run and go to in production. So this is just some kind of known knowledge and practice. But the challenge for you and then each company specifically you already adapted some old technology, for example, Cloud Foundry, and then your question should be, what do I actually do? And then where do I get starting? And how do I get run this kind of practice from like the online training or vendors, first, etc. 
So this is a very interesting survey. Uh, we have an uh, interesting survey here. How many enterprises are going through it? And then according to verify the market research in global application operation, it was almost value $7.7 .7 billion in 2018. And then we it, it increased almost uh, three times, like uh, $31 billion by 2026. And then the application model and service market size also practically increased in rapidly increased from $11 billion to uh, $24 billion by 2025. So this year, 2023, so we almost just left. So the problem is here. So you got a, a lot of opportunity modernization. It's not an option anymore. It is mandatory to innovate your enterprise application services, but also to save cost for maintenance infrastructure and uh, got a more reliable, reliable, flexible, and high purpose application environment. So question is, you don't need to waste a lot of money and time and effort. To follow this uh, journey, so you can order to better in a faster and a reliable way like that happen for your application. So probably you're looking for the, some uh, nice tool or solution or pattern from vendors or open source community uh, to avoid some mistake which is uh, money and time. It's just a way to you can ask your existing vendor you already project or tools or solution. So for example, so customer you already have your cloud foundation you run your application, your business services. And then you can ask them, hey, uh, so we need to think about modernize or migrate cloud foundry. That is a solution provide to us. And they can say my oh yeah we have some uh, nice migration tool you could use that and modernize existing cloud foundry. Uh, some air Kubernetes cluster, which is your on-prem data center, or uh, Amazon AKS or uh, Azure AKS. Yeah. And then the challenge for you again, you got too many choices and methodology, typically proprietary tools, because many vendors they only provide their own uh, tools which underpin their technology. So we can only support this tool, modernize it. This target infrastructure rather than and the standard open source app of that is a big challenge. So let's try to really think about uh, what kind of challenge you face when you have the proper vendors tool. So the majority of existing tool pretty much a proprietary uh, proprietary tools which you only for custom vendors target Kubernetes for a target platform as a service environment. But even if you would be okay, okay, because the only thing I need to just modernize this application to standard Kubernetes environment. However, once you modernize and you all once again lock in that technology. So the first thing is open source is better, but you need to learn the technology at the right to get used to how to use that with tennis practice skill set as well. And then once you adapt to some of the methodology with the, uh, the vendors and pattern or practice, it should be uh, only applicable in your specific organization, not broadly transferable from organization A to organization B uh, across your uh, company. So when you adopt a new technology and tools for your modernization, uh, for example, Cloud Foundry, and it's we'll also think about the transparent because you gotta try to uh, just start like a MVP or just click on that. And then once you gotta succeed, you need to want you wanted to scale out that uh, success story. So this is the reason why again the company project and the community was born and released. The main goal of a company community allows you rate your application modernization to Kubernetes rather than any other vendors Kubernetes services. So with this community, a lot of people are so much passionate about helping others modernize and migrate their monolith application or a vendor working app, hybrid cloud, 
uh, through building into best practice on the how to re platform a uh, rehost and refactor the application, not only application, uh, and then but also the infrastructure layer uh, to the Kubernetes and relevant different cloud native tools. Here is the journey and path to the Kubernetes adoption and beta project and a bunch of the open source technology. You're going to try to get started with the assessment, your application portfolio, not only application, but also infrastructure. For example, how frankly are you going to deploy your business application in production? Individual developers already get used to know how to use CIC. Any kind of network uh, you just set the IP address and or so what kind of observability monitoring tool you're going to use and how to handle circuit breaking. There are a bunch of the questions you need to answer when you assess your application, not only application, but also infrastructure. It can be done by one single person. You can bring uh, entire uh, organization and stakeholder from developer, architect, uh, DBA, and administrator, and a cloud admin, and even security team is. Then after that, you can rationalize and decide. We're gonna uh, go to this way, like reposting, replatforming, or refactoring application. And then you're gonna prepare and resources, which means time, effort, and money, but also hu uh, human resources. Well, and you're gonna give it a try, prove a concept or uh, some pilot project to release and And then once you gotta succeed and gotta green up experience and knowledge, but also practice, and scale out your success story, entire your infrastructure as well as the company wide system in production. You can find a more detailed methodology with some relevant practice if you go to the PG at the right bottom of the web bottom of the URL, the github.com, conveyor and the methodology. So here is the 10,000 feet umbrella conveyor project, uh, what it looks like. And so there, there are many uh, people actually passionate, interested in the conveyor project, building up and then keep growing and then improving conveyor tools in the needs. And then the IBM and Red Hat and uh, join in this project and we are looking for the for a community contributor uh, to be part of this project. And that's why uh, the IBM and Red Hat uh, productize in this uh, conveyor project tools for customer. For example, uh, we can also provide an individual developer for free tools. Uh, Red Hat migration toolkit for one time. It allows developer a uh, modern uh, from specific first to target, for example, or the version uh, OpenJDK to OpenJDK 7, OpenJDK 17, and the JBC AP6 and AP8, also Spring Boot to Workers, and there are a bunch of these. Conveyor project, conveyor community, and project actually provide multiple tools for here, uh, re hosting and platforming, factoring. So, re hosting is a crane. Remember, what is the rehosting in case you never ever heard about that before? So rehosting is a real, real repetitive application. For example, you were running your existing Java or .NET application running on bare metal or virtual. And now you're going to just running on a uh, different. Like, so we're going to really be deep dive with uh, Moodle to Cube uh, today. So, and then they will be later. The refactoring is literally rewriting your application you have a monolith application for Java, like a web server and app server, and then and now you're going to more high scalability and uh, loosely couple your microservice with a factor, not only Java, but also standard, Python, etc. In order to tag, you need to rewrite it. And of course, there are tackle which uh, allows you access your application, etc., before you actually modernize the application. So today, uh, as the our session title, uh, we platform from Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes. Let's so really focus on Move to Cube. As uh, literally you can say, as literally you can see, uh, we're gonna some kind of uh, move our the uh, workload to the Kubernetes. So as you can see, uh, you can you can go to GitHub repository under the conveyor and the Move to Cube. You can find a multiple source to target. 
For example, you can uh, read platform from Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes or uh, Red Hat OpenShift. Not only just a uh, normal workload the borrows to serverize, but advanced deployment strategy using Hamchar and Acton Pipeline, Argos, like that. You can also read platform like Java application, like a Tomcat, like a JLC, and then a the range system. And then you can from Docker Swarm and then compose with platforming. Today, by all means, today we're going to only focus on Cloud Foundry uh, to read platforming to, uh, so today we're going to read, today, today we're going to focus on the platforming from Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes. Okay, let's get right into the demo how it works. First of all, we can go to conveyor.io project page, community official page. You can go to in there and combine a lot of information and then uh, documentation and example. When you go to there, you can scroll down. There are a bunch of tools, and then we're going to really focus on move to queue project. And then when you click on learn more, you can find how to install the application using WebUI or CLI, which one do you prefer? And then we're going to read a bit more, try to use WebUI. And then when you go to tutorial, you're going to use WebUI or CLI, how to start and then how to uh, import the existing application and modernize. Okay, so this is my terminal window and actually I'm going to use WebUI, use container image, you don't need to install it. So using a container image, and then here is a Docker run, and you can use a Podman, and then create.io, conveyor, move to queue, UI, and then. So let me try to run this Docker command. It's a literally start the move to queue API here. It's the API. And then when you go to web browser, open it and look across 80. And now you can see the web UI version move to queue, which is cool. Fast. So let's try to create a new workspace here. Uh, let's say my workspace. Now I'm going to create a new project here. Let's say uh, Cloud Foundry to Cube, CF to Cube. And then uh, I'm going to try to include actually the modernized application, which is for me. So I already have the sample application here, example, uh, Z file. I just uh, choose and upload it and then start in. You can actually have a multiple uh, language path. So this is a Java application. That's why you can find the Java Maven and then already in the sample application, uh, Palm XML. And then there is a bunch of the transformer. It allows you have a more advanced Kubernetes ability, not only just normal application, but also Argo City and the GitOps, and, uh, Cloud Foundry, a uh, bunch of configuration. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, later on they open this OEMO file. And then there are also Knave uh, Kubernetes and the Maven, you can deploy the serverless function as well. Okay, let's try the transformation. Now I'm going to hit button and hit next. And then if you wanted to specify when it's select a uh, styler, then you can specify like a label, but I'm going to read empty by default. And then here's all transformer type you are interested in. Now uh, I'm going to just read the default, but um, let me try to really explain just like you can see what, just like you saw in the Migration plan. There's the Argo City, and then you're gonna uh, generate uh, for build config, and then uh, the like a KNAV and KNAV services. And just in case, uh, when you select all this kind of stuff, and then you got a bunch of the YAML file to run on your Kubernetes cluster. Okay, this is services Java Maven, and then I'm gonna build the application based images, and then uh, next step. So I'm going to export uh, this service like 8080, and then there are some service transform runtime. I'm going to try the JBox at the moment. So you can select the Tomcat or library, and then here's a specific registry. You're going to you're going to push this image into some kind of container registry. Uh, by default, it's a Quay.io. But if, if you don't have any, uh, if you if you don't want to use Quay.io, you can use any other container registry your own. Azure, for example, Docker Hub or Google Container Registry or your internal private container. I'm going to use Quay.io. So here is my image namespace on my uh, credential on Quay.io, which is Daniel Audrey. Okay, I'm going to go to the next. And here is the cross tile in the Kubernetes. As you can see, there are many different types of Kubernetes. 
uh, the Amazon EKS and Azure EKS or Google uh, GKE or IBM IKS or IBM OpenShift and then just OpenShift Kubernetes by default Kubernetes. But today I'm going to try to use Developer Sandbox by Red Hat Developer Program, so which allows developer uh, provide a free Kubernetes cluster even if it's a limited resources for 30 days for free, which is really cool. You don't need to assign or you don't need to give some credit, uh, credit, inform credit card information about the provider. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to uh, select OpenShift at this moment and then go to next. And then so that when you use Kubernetes and you need to some ingress uh, or some kind of node uh, configuration to access the application itself, the OpenShift and you can OpenShift uh, automatically provide the route URL which is uh, based on HTTP proxy operator. So you can that allows you to access fully uh, qualified domain name in the end by external. Number 10, I'm going to just create my service using uh, cluster IP. And then this is just some fantastic uh, as well. So when you deploy to the application to uh, modernize the application, so you literally have some more reliability uh, from the unexpected error. So replicate two, which is a recommended way, which means there are some error one of the application, and automatically Kubernetes will be balancing all incoming traffic running in the LC application. In the meantime, the Kubernetes just show that uh, some error part and or automatic, which is totally different uh, maintenance practice by IT operation. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you need to also change culture, practice, and process when you adopt new technology running on applications on top of the Kubernetes. Okay, I'm gonna just read uh, two, and then uh, in order to register, I don't need an authentication because I already have a local uh, credential. And then here the ingress uh, host name. So let's say this is actually a, a sandbox URL. However, you don't need, I, don't need, I don't need to actually use this one because I'm going to use a uh, vault URL rather than an uh, ingress hole. Okay, so and hit the next, it automatically generate output here. And I can download it, uh, uh, this output uh, as a zip file. And I'm going to extract the zip file. And I can open it some ID tool uh, to and what it looks like. So I'm going to just running on my VS code. As you can see, I'm going to really zoom in. And then you can see that there are the N2K plan file, which is I select. And then here is the configuration, which is I did exactly select the UI. You can change the, the UNB, uh transform this application. Demo. And then when you uh, go to your uh, workspace, the application view, there are three different uh, directory one is deploy which all configuration for this application. The script is about uh, build application as a container and push it application container image container is. You go to the build dash script, the default container and Docker, you can also change it the And then uh, if you select like a Node.js or a different range, find a different uh, base image. But today I'm going to use uh, the Mac OS M1, so which is uh, just in the image like ARM64, which is not going to run on Kubernetes by default. So that's why I changed a little bit at the platform type. The build type is the Linux uh, format, is an x86 4 gigabyte. I'm going to add two build images. And then this is a push image best script. Once again, the default container runtime is Docker. And the default container registry is Quay.io, which is a namespace with my username. You could change that any kind of registry uh, directly. This is JavaScript or during the uh, the web UI or using uh, you can input your preferred uh, registry. Okay, so and let's try to take a look at the deploy directory. As you can see, we already selected all deployment options like a CI city, like Igo city, and then like a platform pipeline. And then also there are some 
uh, configuration in Argo CD when you go inside and this is just a demo file. You don't need to worry about all the same file because previously you have a some only configuration like demo property file for deploying your existing application. Lastly, you know, with this conveyor uh, move to queue, uh, the platforming tool actually manages all relevant Kubernetes best and demo file. You don't need to uh, re uh, engineering this. This is the beauty of the move when you re platform Cloud Foundry to uh, Kubernetes once again. And then there are a bunch of these configuration or your uh, uh, CI CD. And here's the interesting part the K native. So, what is a K native? So, in case you have never ever heard about the K native before, the K native is a sort of a CNC project. It allows uh, you, like uh, the IT operation team, but also developer, to manage your your Microsoft application and deploy your bill as uh, serverless on top of the queue. For example, I want to deploy my application just like Amazon Lambda or Azure Function on top of the Kubernetes. How do you do that? So Knative uh, make that happen. So, but you need to rewrite you you can just see. Kubernetes any faster like a deployment or a batch job something. As you can see, uh, the client the services which is KNAP serving, we need to rewrite existing the cloud foundry manifester or even existing uh, Kubernetes manifester. With this tool, you auto this automatically generate this YAML syntax. You don't need to learn how to rewrite or how to uh, specify your KNAP service. Which Fantastic. So in case you want to deploy this application, but under the YAML, it's a just general uh, your deployment resources like Java Maven deployment, as you can see, and the, just the literally same image, uh, image full task like Y.io, Daniel 030, and uh, Java Maven list. And you can also Daniel services as well. Okay, I'm going to switch my terminal window and then I'm going to try to deploy this YAML file to my Kubernetes, which is a Red Hat Developer Center. The first thing, let me try to uh, change the uh, right directory. I think then you O and then download output. And also, I'm going to try to go into on the script uh, directory. Okay. So let me try to build my application first using the build uh, best script. If you're using Windows operation system, you can use that file. Let me try to really make it faster. And then I'm going to just uh, build the new application. My know runs. There are two images in the build, builder image and an actual Java application image, which is Java Maven. You can actually specify multi-architecture to build application using inner architecture. So let's try to find out the uh, container image actual uh, generated in my local Java Maven and a building application. Now I'm going to push this image into my query registry. So it pushed my registry and the two actually image registry. Okay, I'm just done. Let's visit to uh, my query.io here. And I'm going to try to filter using Java Maven. And now to see Java Maven, just uh, push that. When you go to pegging, and the table is the latest, so which is exactly the same already defined in my YAML file. This is my developer sandbox and my empty uh, names. Let me try to create a new project here. So, first of all, I'm going to make sure I'm uh, literally. Uh, logo in the right projects, DOH dev, just really, you already see DOH dev, the empty project, there's no resource. Uh, so now I'm going to try to apply this application. Oh, just also apply, you can use Azure Cuddle. And as you can see, now new application deployed. It's really bigger. And you can see two application replication. And you can actually go inside the view box. You can see here is a Wi Fi 20 version uh, just running on, and it's much fast. And my application will be really platform from Cloud Foundry. I just uh, 
if he, the wrong this existing the Java application run on the foundry. Okay. So I'm gonna just get my service, which is Java Maven. This is a crossed IP. So I'm gonna expose this service to access from my external services. So now I have a route URL, just OC get route. You can have the fully qualified defined URL. And when you go back to topology view in developer sandbox and open share, you can see there are some new icon open URL. When you click on the URL and you can actually get into Wildfly server. So this uh, visually, uh, I just can like a rest and 10 minutes how to uh, create a formation and re-platforming and then actually uh, re-platforming Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes with one of the existing Java application running on JVC. I'm running on the JVOS, which is by the cloud. Okay. So that's it. That's what I want to showcase today for the demo, how it works. So let's try to go back to our conveyor community. If you are interested in uh, more involving in the conveyor project, we have a, a, a 406 query for at this moment, a 64 and a UI and analyzer and as so on. So if you are interested in a vision into my project, into conveyor project, we are more than happy to have you. And then here is some Slack channel and then how to subscribe, subscribe to Conveyor community and more information. And then here's a YouTube channel. Don't go and then you can find more information uh, relevant to Conveyor project, not only Move to Q, but also uh, the other project as well. And I also created uh, more than 100 uh, tutorial video. You can, I, I, I'm so encouraged all of you subscribe my YouTube channel. Here's the YouTube channel handle, uh, at Daniel030, or pin in your URL, Daniel of TV, or if, if you scan, uh, you want to scan QR code. There are many other, there are many tutorials, not only Kubernetes, but also the conveyor, and then Quarkus, and microservices, and the first function. And then you are more than happy to give some uh, comment or request. For example, hey, Dan, I really want to run something new around uh, GitOps pipeline. And then you, can you just create a new, uh, like a five rest, less than five minute video? Sure, why not? So it will be uh, give some more inspiration and motivation to keep doing this kind of tutorial video. Yeah, once again, uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel and give some more inspiration. Uh, for the urine. That's it. Uh, thanks for joining again, and hopefully you enjoyed this session. And feel free to uh, reach out to me directly on my Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube channel. And hope you enjoy the rest of our Open Source Summit. Thank you. Have a good rest of